friends! Welcome back to Battle Fun with the Dun today. Um, we read John chapter 14 and it was really good. Immediately when we jump into the book, we jump right into Jesus' teaching. He's telling his disciples right away, he has to go. And putting myself in the shoes of the disciples, the followers, um, I can only imagine what they must be feeling. First of all, I think they're confused. Jesus mentions that to them a few times in scripture. And I don't think they fully comprehend that. But thinking about what they're going through, they have abandoned their lives, whether they were fishermen, tax collectors, doctors, all the different things that, that the disciples were, um, they've abandoned that so that they could follow Jesus and they study under him. It's like the, the rabbi and apprentice relationship in the Jewish culture. Um, they're his apprentices. They're studying under him, learning his skill, learning his wisdom, gleaning from him, following him all day, every day. And here he is telling them that he's going to leave them. But this is one of those places in scripture where we are going to miss some meaning and some information and understanding if we don't dig and study just a little bit. After traveling to Israel some, I've realized just how important it is for us to understand the Jewish culture in order to better understand scripture. Thankfully, we have lots of great resources. You don't necessarily have to go to Israel with us, even though you totally should. But um, there are so many resources out there for us to understand. Some of my favorite resources, BibleGateway.com. They have free commentaries on there. Matthew Henry is one of my favorite um, blueletterbible.com that helps us go back to the original language and understand that. But one of the Bibles I have, good old Grandpa Tony, as my Sunday school class calls him, Tony Evans commentary, he helps shed a little light on what Jesus is saying. And what's going on is in this culture, it is customary for fathers to build rooms onto their houses. Um, when their sons are preparing to marry, they start working on a, on a new room to their house. And so these homes actually have like many multi-generations living under one roof. This, this idea of just um, one generation under a home or just the parents and the one set of kids under one roof, that's kind of a, a more modern theme. And so in this culture, that's how it was. So it's not Jesus saying, bye Felicia, I'm leaving you. When he tells him he's gonna go prepare a place for him, he's saying, I'm not abandoning you. I'm going to prepare a place for you to come spend eternity with him. And he's telling them this and he's telling us this. He's preparing a place so that we can be with him forever and ever. And I'm gonna to touch on this in a little bit. Also in this chapter, we're quickly moving towards the end of the book, but also towards the end of Jesus's earthly ministry as well. And so because of that, we know that all of Jesus's words are deeply important. As we get closer and closer to Jesus's death, the things that he says seem to carry more weight. Of course, all of his words are important, but these, these last words, you know he's intentionally leaving his people with them. It's kind of like when God told us, me and Dusty, that he was going to move us from our church home in Vivian. We had no idea that it was going to be a process of, of a couple of years and, you know, him moving our own hearts and preparing us and doing work in us and, and all the work that he was doing within that church and all the work that he was doing within our church where we were to come. But during that time, Dusty sermons were especially poignant and intentional for our pre precious church family there. Of course, his words are always meaningful. Of course, he always digs deeply. I just wish people understood the preparation that a pastor goes through, both in his own heart and the burden that he carries, um, that burden of importance, knowing that he is sharing God's word, God's message to other followers. But during this time, um, in what we felt were the final days, every word that God gave to Dusty to leave with this sweet church family of ours in preparation for what was to come, it was super important. At some point in the year after God moved us here, 
um, one of our precious friends from that church contacted Dusty and, and she told him she had been going through her journal and reading through her sermon notes and she could see how Dusty was preparing them for the phase that was to come through the words that he was sharing in his message, which it was God preparing them. But the final things that we tell someone are really important and they seem to carry extra significance. And so when I read Jesus's words, as we get closer and closer to his death, and remember we learned from earlier in this book that no one takes his life, he gives it over. So he knows exactly when it's coming. These words are important. And in what we see in chapter 14, we see Jesus say some things that we can go ahead and mark down as extra important. In verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is a very specific and divisive truth because there are many, many different religions that say they believe in God, but they believe there are lots of different paths to this God, to whatever God they believe in. And here, Jesus tells us God's plan, his specific plan. And that's for anyone who wants to come to the Father, they have to come through him, Jesus Christ, God's Son. Tara Lee Cobble likes to say, it is not exclusive. God wants all to know him, but it's very specific. You can only come to know him through Jesus Christ, God the Son. Um, another thing we see something that's a thing with other religions. Not all religions are specific about who their God is, but we see Jesus in this chapter, his conversation with Philip. He wants to make it very clear who this God is. And he is pointing us to this Trinitarian God, meaning our God that we follow is three in one. God the Father, God the Son Jesus, the one talking to Philip, and God the Spirit. And Jesus tells them that if they have seen him, God the Son, then they've seen the Father. He is God incarnate, God with flesh on this earth. And so, yes, our God is bigger than us. This idea of the Trinity is bigger than us. And it's a crazy idea to wrap our mind around. But the longer I follow him and the longer I seek to know him, the more he helps me to know all three in the one God that he is. Jesus also wants us to know that this God wants a relationship with all who believe. In verse 12 of chapter 14, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I'm going to the Father. Um, and then we get to hear about the third person of this trinity. Remember, the disciples are his apprentices, and he's telling them he's going to leave them, and they probably don't feel as if they're ready to do this on their own. In fact, we know they don't because, spoiler, as soon as Jesus dies, also spoiler, um, they go back to their old way of life because they don't know what to do. It's like they don't know how to follow without him. But here Jesus is telling them they're not going to have to follow without him. Jesus tells them that when he goes to the Father, he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will have a special intimacy with us indwelling us. So even more intimate than Jesus walking the earth with them, which I can only imagine was amazing, awesome. Um, we will have an even more intimate indwelling of God through the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus mentions our obedience to God a couple of times. This is another thing he leaves us with that's super important. In verse 21, he says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And in verse 23, Jesus answers them, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And this is, this is Jesus saying that if we are followers of the way, if we are his good and faithful servants, then we will obey. And it's not obedience that is work, um, but it's obedience that is an overflow of our love for God. When we love God, that is the fruit that flows from our lives. We want to please him. We want to live for him. We want to keep his word and his commandments. Um, my favorite thing about this chapter, as we read through, my big takeaway is that God wants to be with us. This dwelling, this idea of dwelling and tabernacling with us has constantly been on my mind 
as we read through the book of John. He wants to be with us. And if you can't see that, your eyes, your heart, your minds, they're closed. He walks with us in the garden with humanity. But when we choose sin, God made a way to dwell with us. He set up that sacrificial system. And then his presence came to us through a cloud in the day and a pillar of fire by night. And then he sent his son Jesus to literally dwell physically with us and to show us the way to live and then to die for us and to pay for our sins once for all, getting rid of that old sacrificial system. And then he sends his spirit to indwell us, to get even closer to us, to get under our skin. The Holy Spirit helps us to live a life that keeps us close to God. That's how we obey God. The Holy Spirit convicts, it leads, guides, it gives us wisdom. Um, and the Holy Spirit helps us to continually be reminded that he is with us so that we should be with him. We should abide with him. He wants to be with us more than anything. And that's so obvious. And it's so such a beautiful truth in this book of John. There's nothing we could do to earn this. There's nothing we could do to deserve this. This is God's grace. This is God's mercy and gift to us. And more than anything, he wants us to be with him. He is always with us. He wants us to be with him. So as you go about your day today, think about it. Are you with him today? He is with you, but are you intentionally with him everywhere you go? All right, friends, thanks for joining me today. Hopefully we have some more friends tomorrow and we'll see you then. Bye.